Myself and a buddy on my squad responded to an alarm. The incident location was an old office type building that had been converted to doctor's offices. There was a pharmacy attached to it. Our dispatch received a motion signal from an upstairs office. Keyholder arrives on scene and we go in to secure the building. The stairs were locked behind a door that, of course, the keyholder didn't have the keys to. So we took the elevator up to the second floor. Not the most tactically sound option, I know. Elevator opens to a pitch black hallway, except for one overhead light at the end of the hall. We start checking doors and so far all are secured. We get to the last office and sure enough, the door is unlocked. We make entry and observe it to be an unused office. The door opened to a sizable waiting room and reception area. There were about 10 or 12 exam rooms, all cleared with no hiccups. We exit the office and immediately something seems off. That is, when I realized the overhead light at our end of the hallway that had been on was now off, replaced by another light over by the elevators. I look at my squad mate, and he is completely white. I ask him what is wrong, and he says, weren't all those doors we checked closed and locked? I tell him yeah, so Buddy says, well now they're all standing open. Sure enough, all the offices down the hallway we had just checked were now standing open. Pucker factor sinks in at this point. So we start clearing offices and securing them. We finish the last office and on our way out, just before we turn the corner to get into the waiting area, the main door just slammed shut. Then our radio started going nuts with some kind of static feedback. Now I just want to get the hell out of there. We get back in the elevator and head down to the first floor to make contact with the key holder again. However, the key holder is nowhere to be found. I contact dispatch and request a callback number for the key holder so I can advise him of what we found. Dispatch states that the key holder was still en route to us and was advising an ETA of 5 minutes. I advised dispatch that we already had been out with the key holder. Dispatch requests. I give them a call. I call dispatch and she tells me that there is no way we are out there with the key holder. She states that the alarm company had only just made contact with one. Eventually, the real key holder arrives on scene and I ask her about the man that had let us in the building, the first key holder. She asked me to describe him and so I did. She states that that sounds like one of the doctors that used to lease the office on the second floor at the end of the hall. She then states that he had committed suicide at his summer home several days ago. I still won't go back there. A few years back, prior to sworn LEO, I worked as an security guard at a hospital. Sounds cool, and it was, except for the fact that it was 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. I worked alone, and the hospital I guarded was abandoned. A year prior, the hospital built a brand new facility to replace their five-story tall 1900s building. When the employees and patients left, they left everything in place. It looked like the people just disappeared in a hurry. Partially full coffee mugs, uniforms hanging on coat racks, wheelchairs in the halls, everything as it was with a good coating of dust. I was always a third shift kind of person. I don't get the night jitters or scare easily, but this place could do it to the best of them. Every night I would walk or ride a wheelchair through the halls that were supposed to be empty and unused. Every night I would end up having to close doors and relock them. I would walk one floor, move up to the next, and continue on. I got a little shaky when an hour after already walking a hallway, 
I would have to turn off the same hall lights and close the same doors again in the building. Or when I would be walking a hall and then I would hear footsteps on the floor above me, doors opening and closing, elevators moving from floor to floor, phone ringing, nurse call lights going on, etc. There were only three times I got the I hate this feeling. First time, I was checking offices on the fourth floor. There was a light on in a locked hallway, no surprise. This hallway hadn't been renovated since the place was built, short of electricity, so everything was from the 1920s. Unlock the door, flip the lights, walk out, relock the door and turn to leave. Behind me, I hear the flip of a light switch. Through the frosted glass, I see the lights went back on. I left the hallway alone that night. Second time was riding an elevator between floors. I was taking the elevator to the top floor, when at about number four of five floors, I hear laughing and muffled talking. It kept getting louder as it got higher. Elevator makes it to number five. Door swings open and absolute silence. Of course, every light was on on the floor, even in the patient rooms. I checked high and low. Not a single living and breathing person in that place, except for me. Third, and worst of all, was just an average night. I'm on the lower level, locking a door in the corridor. The door had a glass middle, but on the back side it was covered by white tape. The room it led to, it was dark, and the hallway a few feet behind me was partially lit, so the glass acted like a perfect mirror. Everything normal, key in, locks click, turning the key, when behind me, I see the full outline of a person walk past me in the hallway, clear as day. Just a full shadow of a person walked past. I froze, only for about a second and then ran into the hall after the supposed person. No one. Just silence. Awesome gig, but after a year, it felt like I should have been an exorcist with all the stuff happening. The other guards that worked on the days opposite to mine had the same stuff happen, except they always saw nuns walking into rooms just outside of an old chapel on the third floor. Better nuns than something else, I guess. When I was a municipal cop, I was sent to a missing persons runaway juvenile call. The town I worked in was inner city and poor, but it was one of the better streets in town and the family was squared away. While I was taking the report of their runaway teenage daughter in the family's living room, an older daughter who was in the room pointed towards a hallway and yelled, Grandma! The husband ran into the hallway yelling, Ma! Ma! The husband returned to the living room and asked, Officer, did you see her? Did you see my mother? I told him I had not, and asked him why it was remarkable that his mother had walked down the hallway. The husband replied, She died last year. We see her walking around the house all the time. I took the rest of the report while standing on the front porch. I work for a tribal police department as well, and believe me, the spirits here can get to you. There is a section of Florida Road between Dade and Collier Counties known as the Western Camps. Dade Collier Airport is located here. Anyway, while on midnight shift, I was patrolling this area and called an area check. My radio worked absolutely fine. Just then, that commercial for the movie, Fourth Kind, played on my FM radio. I immediately became spooked. A couple of miles down the road, I called another check and got nothing but loud static. Since I was near the end of my check, I decided to turn around. And when I did, I froze. Tons and tons of eyes staring at me from in the water in the trees, and on the road. I couldn't tell whether they were alligators or whatnot, but I flew back east to familiar territory. 
Another officer who works with us said he was doing the same check and heard someone knock on the back window of his patrol car while he was stopped. He stepped out of the vehicle with his weapon drawn, but saw absolutely nobody. I hate going out there. My old partner told me this one. Enjoy. Back in 87, an A-7 Corsair crashed into the Ramada here in Indianapolis. The story was there was a Boy Scout troop staying in the hotel. One of the boys placed a call to his parents after the crash and said, Dad, tell Mom I'm fine. Everything is alright. Don't worry. And the line was disconnected. The parents were already watching the news and saw what was happening and drove to Indy to get their son. When they arrived, the chaplain from Wayne Fire broke the bad news that their son was killed in the crash. The father said there is no way because he spoke to his son after the crash was on the phone. The father said there is no way because he spoke to his son after the crash on the phone. The chaplain explained their son was found in the lobby where the majority of the damage and fire took place. He was found by the payphones. Later it was determined that call came from a lobby phone. 20 minutes after the plane struck the building. Hey everyone, Dismal Hero here. Thanks for checking out the video, and if you like what you saw, make sure to subscribe so you're always up to date with my new videos. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.